I'm the clinical nurse consultant at Parkinson's Victoria. Parkinson's Victoria is a peak body for people living with Parkinson's disease. We also represent carers and provide extensive health education for healthcare professionals throughout the state of Victoria. The Continents Foundation of Australia is the body representing people with or at risk of incontinence and also providing health information to carers and healthcare professionals. Parkinson's Victoria and the Parkinson's Australia Network are very pleased to collaborate with the Continents Foundation of Australia, um, acknowledging that we have crossover with many of our, our clients um, and to actually provide some, some sound evidence-based resources for people living with Parkinson's and related conditions and who are also challenged with continence issues. Continence issues are incredibly common in Parkinson's, um, both constipation and um, bladder issues, which are particularly urgency. And they relate directly to the underlying cause of Parkinson's, which is a loss of dopamine producing cells, both within the central nervous system and also peripherally, um, particularly within the gut. One thing we must be always mindful of is that some of the bladder and bowel issues that are encountered by people with Parkinson's may also be related to normal ageing or underlying pathologies any changes need to be thoroughly investigated by the appropriate healthcare professional. The treatments for Parkinson's are quite extensive and they focus around replacing dopamine, so with dopamine replacement medications such as Cinemet or Matapart, increasing the uptake of dopamine using dopamine agonist medication, which is medications such as Nupro or Cifrol or Cabeza, or changing the way the body metabolises the dopamine, things such as COMPT inhibitors, COMPTAN, and MIOB inhibitors, Azolect. Unfortunately, despite the fact that we have a cocktail of medications that we use to treat Parkinson's, they actually focus on centrally derived dopamine as opposed to peripheral, and we find that many of our issues are related to peripherally produced dopamine. So unfortunately, they don't tend to have a significant impact, um, particularly with constipation, although there is probably more of a, a relationship between the medication and bladder control. One of the, the key lifestyle tips that we usually will sort of say to people when they're recently diagnosed, or even when they've been living with it for some time, is that keeping active and being as active as you possibly can is probably ideal. In relation particularly to constipation, we sort of encourage you sort of water and walking really essential things. Staying active and being mobile will assist the, with gut movement and keeping enough water inside of your body, at least two litres a day, will actually help keep the, the, that stool nice and soft and easy to pass. So they're probably the two key lifestyle changes we'd encourage, but also often with all of us, um, some dietary changes might also be valuable too. Increasing the amount of fibre in your diet. So psyllium husks on your cereal in the morning, buying that muesli that's got extra bran in it, prune juice, pear juice, and, and, and increasing your level of sort of food and fruit and vegetables, also great ways of increasing the amount of fibre in your diet and really sort of innocuous ways of starting to manage that often troublesome symptom. The most important thing is that we maintain a regular pattern of bowel elimination. So the medications that we tend to, to think are the best are agents that are bulking, so that produce a bit of bulk for the stool, and also lubricating, so they're going to make the stool passage a bit easier. We often try to avoid medications that might be osmotic or draw fluid into the bowel to keep the stool softer, particularly given that it's often an older client group that we're dealing with, they often don't drink enough water anyway and that those drugs often aren't that effective. And because one of the primary reasons why we're getting constipation in Parkinson's is the gut slowing down because of a lack of peripheral dopamine, agents that are irritants sometimes just cause a little bit of sort of cramping and abdominal pain and really don't produce that much effect other than someone with a sore tummy. So we might want not to want to avoid those. What we generally sort of say, it's really a tailor-made um, regime that we need to come to. So we would always recommend someone with Parkinson's or a healthcare professional contact either Parkinson's Australia or the National Continents Hotline to discuss the particular issue and we can actually come up with a more tailored solution. The mechanism behind the problems with bladder control in Parkinson's is, is actually quite an intricate mechanism. Um, and the, the main problem that's experienced is urgency and occasionally frequency. Urgency relates to the fact that often as the detrusor muscles, so those muscles in the bladder, that as they get sort of un put under pressure, they send a signal to the brain um, to sort of say, you need to go to the toilet. Often that, that, that signal's interrupted and sent once and that the signal that's actually sent is you've got to go and you've got to go right now. So people get one signal and they feel like they're about to, to have an accident. And that's 
basically a misinterpretation of in the mitruition centre in the brain. So that lack of dopamine in the brain is causing that, that, that sort of that signal to be misinterpreted. So it's quite a, quite a sort of a, a circuitous reason why we suffer urgency. Sometimes that signal gets sent several times and interpreted several times, so we get urgency and frequency in Parkinson's. One of the things that we must remember as healthcare professionals is that Parkinson's is also a condition that in interferes with your mobility. So someone who's getting a, a signal, they've got to go to the toilet, and otherwise they're going to have an accident, and they don't move as quickly, um, is going to be very distressing for them, and often cause a little bit of anxiety and panic and distress. So you need, really need to factor that into the way we manage those patients. We know that, that unlike constipation, the bladder problems can be slightly um, sort of impacted by the medications. Ideally, getting drugs on time every time um, is probably the key. And many patients will actually tell you that their symptoms or their bladder symptoms actually get slightly worse when their medication level is getting a bit low. That might relate to, oh, I know my drugs are getting a bit low because sort of I can feel that my bladder is telling me I'm getting a bit more urgency, it's more troublesome at the moment. And often that's occurring just before the next dose is due. Another difficulty that's often associated with the frequency and urgency is nocturia, so frequency of urination at night. For most people with Parkinson's, we tend to concentrate their medications during the waking hours. So they might take their drugs every three hours, but that's often, say, between six o'clock in the morning and eight o'clock in the evening, and then we're not taking much medication all overnight. So people are operating on a lower level of that, that introduced dopamine, which means that that urgency symptom is probably a little bit more apparent at night time, as is the frequency. So that can be a bit troublesome because you're working on a lower level, so we've got a bit more of that, that bladder problem. Unfortunately, because people are often not as mobile when you've got Parkinson's, and you might also experience some blood pressure fluctuations, people might retain a bit more fluid during the day. So when they go to bed at night, what happens is they start to diurese that fluid. The kidneys are pumping out lots of urine. The bladder's getting full and sending off lots of messages say you've got to go. So you get nocturia, so frequency, urgency, and nocturia at night. Very disturbing for the people living with Parkinson's and also for their partners. Probably the simplest way to manage it is if you can have a little siesta in the afternoon, lying down with your feet up, and you'll actually start to shift some of that fluid that might have collected during the morning. That's probably the, the easiest and quite frankly, probably one of the nicest ones if you actually are sort of have the opportunity to have a siesta to do. Another way is to actually start to reduce your fluid intake. And so say you, you drink, drink most of your fluid before 4 p.m. In the, in the evening. So from 4 p.m. to when you go to bed, you're not drinking as much fluid. So you've actually got as not, not as much fluid on board to create a problem at night time. Some people with Parkinson's might occasionally get some retention of urine. That's where they might retain a volume of urine in their bladder, even though they might think they've voided effectively. That can be particularly problematic because retention can be a, a trigger for urine retract infection and also for, for problems with kidneys. Measuring a residual volume if people are having that through an ultrasound is, is something that we would suggest that we do. And if we've got a residual volume that's usually greater than 120 mils, we might need to take some action. Some people might intermittently catheterise, we might need a permanent catheter, but certainly we would need to see and consult a urologist actually in regards to that particular problem. Occasionally the sensation of urgency can actually be slightly worsened if the pH of the urines change a bit. So particularly if someone's been having a lot of orange juice or pineapple juice, which is quite acidic, we can actually acidify the urine, um, which can actually sort of increase that bladder irritability and make the urgency um, and frequency a little bit more of an apparent symptom. There are a range of different medications that we can use to assist with the, the bladder issues that will either help with reducing that, that feelings of urgency um, and frequency, particularly we might use them at night time. However, we need to be very, very careful that some of those medications are contraindicated for use in Parkinson's as they might interfere with the uptake of dopamine. So we need to be very careful when we're prescribing them. And some of them may also contribute to some confusion. So again, we need to be quite careful. And again, a specialist um, would need to prescribe them. And the treating neurologist, so the, the doctor who looks after the Parkinson's, should also make sure that we're, we're comfortable having those drugs prescribed. In regards to, to bladder, um, problems. Often what we find is if we, um, if we use some really practical solutions, continence pad, 
might give people some, some feelings of, of security. Moving your house around so you're in a bedroom closer to the, um, the bathroom. Um, if you happen to be in a small house and you're actually distance the bathroom, having it close by is handy. Having a commode or a bottle in the bedroom can also help and sort of often minimises that disruption at night time. But a bit of lifestyle change can also be really effective too. Exercise again becomes quite important and some often some targeted pelvic floor exercises both for males and females can be particularly valuable. Whilst not always reducing the sensation of urgency can often give you the confidence to feel that you can manage a bit more effectively. More help and advice um, and information in regards to continence issues in Parkinson's is available through either Parkinson's Victoria or Parkinson's in your state. So we have a number of different national state bodies, also through the National Continence Hotline. The national Continence Hotline is 1800 330066 and the National Parkinson's Hotline is 1800 644 189. There are also extensive resources available on the websites of both the National Continence Foundation and also Parkinson's Australia. The National Continence Helpline operates Monday to Friday, 8am to 8pm and provides information and confidential and professional advice to callers regarding the prevention and management of incontinence. The National Parkinson's Helpline is staffed by healthcare professionals and operates Monday to Friday, 9 to 5.